30 August 2005, FSO Sharjah. The FSO was built at MIS Sharjah Yard for single buoy mooring Monaco to be used at the Turkmenistan project in the Caspian Sea. This is how the massive structure was loaded onto multiple axle trailers, onto a barge, floated, and loaded onto a fast ocean-going vessel to be taken to the Caspian Sea. The 2,900-ton Ogazan Nassau is sitting on supports too high for the loadout, which is why the hydraulic trailers were used to lower the FSO. The hydraulic trailers take the weight of the FSO, lifts it up, and the support structure is lowered. The trailers lower the FSO back onto the supports and are removed from underneath. Once in reach of cranes and forklifts, the supports on the trailers themselves are lowered and the procedure repeated again. Due to the lack of space between the FSO and the quayside, the trailers use the barge pre-positioned for the loadout for the extra space required. When the day ends, the lowering operation is completed. 1 September 2005, FSO Sharjah. The trailers are now inserted once again in their final configuration for the loadout. They are being positioned under the structure until all of it is ready to be lifted off of its supports. Final measurements are being taken to ensure absolute stability and levels. She is now ready to be moved. Slowly, the structure is being moved to the barge. This operation is a result of close cooperation between many people and excitement and tension is in the air. Everyone is busy getting ready or observing the progress closely. The barge, which has to take the FSO, is already moored at the jetty. Loading ramps, timbers and spreaders are placed to bridge the gap between the jetty and the barge. The barge is being ready to take the weight of the huge structure on one end of her whilst maintaining trim, which will be done by means of water ballasting. The huge tanks within the barge are being prepared for this gargantuan operation. Support stools on which the structure will be placed before removing the trailers are put into pre-calculated spots to the millimeter calculated to take a weight of 60 tons each. The structure has now reached the jetty and final checks are being made all round to make sure that nothing can go wrong. Not only the equipment needs to be perfect, but so do the tide and weather conditions. The go-ahead has been given and the last few meters are covered ever so slowly to make sure that all axles are perfectly aligned to roll onto the barge dead center. Millimeter by millimeter, the trailers slowly roll onto the barge. It looks so simple, but every meter of trailer rolling onto the barge at this end means tons of water leaving the barge tanks elsewhere. The barge needs to be kept absolutely trim to avoid toppling over in any direction. Whilst exquisite maneuvering onto the barge takes place topside, gallons of water are being pumped into tanks one end and spat out of tanks at the other end to make sure that the structure can keep on rolling. The structure rolls its final meters, final marks made, closely observed by the designated crew to ensure that it stops to the millimeter above the pre-positioned support stools. Final positioning adjustments are made and the stop sign is given. The structure is lowered onto the stools and with the structure solidly planted in position, the trailers are lowered further and removed from the barge one by one. With the trailers and most of the auxiliary equipment removed, the barge lies perfectly trim in the sea, ready to be towed a short distance away for the next operation.
The mooring lines are readjusted and the team poses for a photograph of a job well done. So far, the next major step in TTS's operation is yet to come. 3 September 2005, FSO Sharjah. The FSO now needs to be floated. This will be done by sinking the barge down to the seabed, allowing the FSO to lift herself off of the stools it is now resting on and towing her away, after which the barge will be refloated. First, the stern is slowly lowered through increasing its ballast by pumping seawater into the ballasting tanks. With a speed of 25 centimeters per hour, stern of the barge Atlantic Ann slowly sinks underwater, taking the FSO with her. The rate of ballasting through water pumps is closely watched from a console that controls each and every pump positioned alongside the length of the barge. A tug hovers nearby, ready to jump in should things not go as planned. The entire arrangement is now about to touch the seabed, and divers are sent in to check once again that all is well underneath. This is an awesome sight, and even men who don't necessarily need to be there anymore are lined up to watch this intricate operation. With the stern now down to the seabed, it is time to lower the bow of the Atlantic Ann. The assisting barge is repositioned once again, and the ballasting tanks in the bow are pumped full of seawater. Divers are continually sent in to ensure that both the Atlantic Ann and the Ogazan are bearing up well, and that the operation continues smoothly. The tug is waiting patiently to take charge of the Ogazan. The FSO is now floating free, with the Atlantic Ann having come to a full rest on the seabed. The tug connects the FSO and her mooring lines are released. In the falling darkness, she moves gracefully away from the jetty, on her way to her next stop. The Atlantic Ann will be lifted from the seabed and prepared for her next submerging in Jebel Ali in a few days' time. 8 September 2005, Mopu 1, Jebel Ali. This is the Mopu 1, Mobile Positioning Unit 1, destined for Baku, Azerbaijan. She is currently on the jetty in Jebel Ali port, already loaded onto hydraulic trailers and is waiting her turn to be taken into the water. The barge Atlantic Ann looks a confusing array of ropes, cables, hoses, stools and other necessary tools for the job. She is ready for another hard job. Her stools are repositioned the pumps and hoses checked, her tanks pre-ballasted and her trim perfect. The loading ramps are placed in readiness for receiving the Mopu 1. Her support barge is standing by with all the equipment required to operate the barge. The trailers are moved aboard ever so slowly. To allow the pumps the time to adjust the ballasting tanks, which is needed to keep the barge trim. A constant eye is kept on the loading ramps as well as on the pumps and hoses, which need constant monitoring and regular adjustment to be absolutely sure of a smooth operation. Whilst gallons of water are being moved back and forth into and out of the barge, the structure Mopu 1 is inched forward onto the barge. She will be positioned above the support stools to the millimeter exact before being lowered onto them. The entire operation is closely monitored from every angle so that nothing can go wrong. Just a little too fast or too slow or a little off to one side could have catastrophic consequences. TTS specializes in just this sort of thing. 
and the operation is going fully according to plan. But the tide is falling fast, as it is known to do in Jebel Ali port, and there is no time to lose. With only a short time to spare, the trailer's last axles roll onto the barge. Now the Mopu-1 is moved into position and lowered a little to hover just above the support stools. Some final secondary supports to ensure that the structure receives full support are put into place by the TTS crew. And the structure is lowered onto the stools. And with the sun setting in this largest man-made port in the world, the final operations are completed and the trailers are removed from the barge. 11 September 2005, Mopu 1, Jebel Ali. Today is the day where the Mopu 1 will take to the water. Once again, the Atlantic Anne's ballast tanks are filled with seawater, stern first, until she rests on the seabed. Meticulously, her progress is followed, with constant up to date calculations being checked and double checked. The structure reaches a precarious looking angle by the time the Atlantic Anne reaches the seabed and commences to lower her bow. As with all TTS operations, the entire operation is closely monitored from all sides, including standby tugs in close proximity. The Atlantic Anne is settled onto the seabed and the Mopu-1 floats free. She is gently maneuvered from over the barge and smoothed along the quayside. Atlantic Anne is resurfaced and prepared for her next loadout and submerging operation. 13 September 2005, Mopu 2, Jebel Ali. The Mopu 2 is another large structure which is also to be put into operation in Baku, Azerbaijan. She was also built in Jebel Ali port, where she has been loaded onto trailers ready to be gently rolled aboard Atlantic Anne, who is already back into place waiting to take the Mopu 2 on board. All equipment has been repositioned to the specifications of Mopu 2 to ensure that the load of the structure will be safely and securely taken. The structure is once again carefully moved aboard, with the ballasting tanks again being manipulated in such a way that the barge will remain absolutely trim. Though this may seem like a repetitive operation, it most certainly is not, as every structure has its load divided differently, and because of this, the ballasting and deballasting of a barge, and hence the movement of each structure onto a barge, must be done with the utmost care and at different rates of operation each and every time. Once the load has been carefully positioned above the support stools, some final adjustments are made to avoid any possible flaw in the division of the load of the structure. After a last check that everything is in place, the hydraulic trailers are slowly lowered so that the Mopu 2 hovers just centimeters above the support stools. Timber protection and filler supports are inserted and the structure is settled securely down. 14 September 2005, Mopu 2, Jebel Ali. The final sinking will be done today, weather permitting. The trailers are removed from the barge and the equipment that can be cleared from the barge is taken off. Once again, the pumps are working to fill up the ballast tanks of the Atlantic Anne. And slowly, centimeter by centimeter, she settles herself onto the seabed. Under constant close monitoring, allowing the Mopu 2 to float free. The tugs take charge of the vessel and slowly but surely maneuver the Mopu 2 off of Atlantic Anne and safely alongside the quay.
the three structures, the FSO, the MOPU-1, and MOPU-2, will be towed 50 miles out to sea, where they will be taken aboard a fast, semi-submergible, ocean-going vessel, dockwise swift, to be taken to the Caspian Sea, where they will be released to be taken to their final positions to be put into operation as soon as possible.